So when we go back to the beginning in 1997, when Becky Flowers had the foresight to create what's called a plan unit development. That's what a PUD, a plan unit development is. So she takes these 3,000 acres that she has of undeveloped land, pretty land, but undeveloped. Um, so how does she, with her education and work history as a school teacher, then do what she's done? Well, I will offer my view of that. First of all, she's got a rare commitment to quality. Uh, she knows what she likes, uh, she, and most of the time what she likes is what looks good. All you got to do is drive through Flowers Plantation, and, you, and that is reflected as what's actually on the ground. So she has this commitment to quality, and she's also paired that with a fierce and some would say stubborn, but fierce and stubborn resolve to make sure things were done right. Uh, when she's had to fight people that didn't want to do things right, she did. When she's exercised her discretion, I would tell you from my viewpoint in any event, it's all been about making sure things were done right. The history of what exists there on the ground in these past 30-something years reflects that that commitment, that ferocity has been rewarded with a beautiful place, a jewel of Johnston County. How did she do this? Very briefly, and we're getting to the issues, I promise you. She did it because she wanted, again, to do it right. So she hires nationally known attorneys that, that deal with developments, PUDs. How do you do it? What's the structure that you use to create and maintain this type of community? So she does that, not inexpensive. Gets the best, they develop the structure. And that structure is still what exists today. There have been a number of amendments, and all of these legal documents are on the web page that you can access. But she starts off, and she has 3,000 acres. It's her land. So she's entitled to do with that land what she wants to do with that land and control it, again, with eye toward quality and making sure things are done right. So she is established under these documents is the declarant, and that is that she has the architectural review authority which she's exercised through the decades, and she still has. I'm gonna to return to this with pools, but this architectural review has been one of the issues that uh, has come up from time to time. So she creates also, in addition to having this, this uh, authority to say, I want it to be developed uh, with communities, they each have their own character, they need to be consistent, it needs to fit together. If you have a jigsaw puzzle, all the pieces need to fit together, and they do at Flowers Plantation. To make this happen, there's going to be common areas. There's going to be buffers according to roads, as, uh, besides roads. There's going to be need to maintain. There's going to be walking trails. There, there's all of these things, some roads. So she creates the Flowers Plantation Foundation. And of course, you know that. You pay dues to that. That's a nonprofit organization. And it is intended to control and maintain the common areas, uh, all of which I just mentioned, and to do so uh, in a nonprofit fashion, which it's done. She makes zero out of that and there's never been any taking of money or misuse of money from the foundation. It's been used to create the quality and maintain the quality that Flowers Plantation is. So she also had the vision of a sort of private community within this community of Flowers Plantation, and that was the village. Mixed, uh, mixed use, some, some mixed use, and then, but mostly these uh, upscale developments that or, or private and gated and so forth. And that was a vision and a desire and a hope that that what could be accomplished there. That the village would be a master HOA, which it is, and she's a, the operator of that. And it's made up of all the individual HOAs that exist in the village. They're all members and have voting uh, authority. It's for some things about the master HOA. So that, that structure allowed the village to come into being. So, in essence, when you get 3,000 acres and you make it a PUD, it's the equivalent of a municipality. Uh, no town can come take it over. It is what it is. It's authorized by law and it shall continue to exist. On the one hand, it being not a town, there are no town taxes. It never will be. On the other hand, it has to have dues to pay for the things that normally town taxes would fund if you were in a municipality. So everybody knows that. That's 
kind of the system that's set up is you pay dues to the foundation, which does the common areas. If you're in the village, you pay village, village dues for the uh, operations of the villages I'll talk about later. You pay dues to your own HOA for the purposes of that HOA. So that's the structure.